and welcome to Simon Says Artwork. In this video it's the last of the 15 minute memory series that I started off this channel with. It's a very good exercise and I do recommend trying it. Alright so let's take a look. Okay, for anyone who isn't aware of the rules for this 15 minute memory drawing, the rules are, well, the rules aren't about drawing on a piece of cardboard, just to start off, because you can see that I am beginning with my, uh, my packaging from a creamy Greek style yogurt. This is something which I've done all of my 15 minute memory drawings on. And I quite like the fact that when I put them all together on the wall, it almost looked like film reel, you know, all put together. And that wasn't part of the rules. That was just my preference. You can do these as small as you like, just as thumbnails if you like. But it's probably best to do them a bit larger than thumbnails because... You have 15 minutes and that's quite a good amount of time to do a drawing from memory so you've got enough space to cover an area but I say that I use a brush pen so that helps with covering this amount of space. So here are the actual rules of the 15 minute memory drawing practice. First you don't have any photographic reference and you don't sit where the memory is based upon so that you can look up and use it as a reference. You have to do it from memory. And that's more difficult than I had assumed it would be. Because I like drawing from imagination and I'm trying to improve upon drawing from reference. And it's quite hard to draw from memory because you're trying to be accurate and it exposes how little you actually remember. Anyway, I was supposed to be talking about the rules. The rules are, it's from memory, no reference, outside of your memory. It's a line drawing, so no shading, no hatching. And I know what it looks like I'm doing there is hatching, but what I'm actually doing is um, texture, which is, I know it sounds like an excuse, but I promise you it's a like a dishcloth. So at the very edge of a dishcloth, you have stitching, and that's what I'm drawing is the texture of the stitching. It's not hatching that I'm doing. Um, so no hatching, no shading, no blocking in shading. You stick to a line drawing. And it has to be 15 minutes, as close as you can to 15 minutes at least. And all of these rules I've broken. Uh, aside from the reference, I've never gone to a reference for any of the drawings. But I've broken the rules of hatching I've done. I've done blocked out shading. Not purposely, just accidentally forgetting the rule. And I've also gone way over the 15 minutes in other videos, just out of being unaware and not having an alarm set for the drawing. This is the seventh um, video that I filmed. And it was just lost for some reason. I knew it existed and I think I spoke about it in the other videos. But I didn't know where it was. I have a lot of videos backed up of different drawings and paintings and practice that I did. And it's now that I'm starting to go through them because I have a new computer and I'm looking for different content to upload. And that's where I found this drawing. And I thought, fine, I'll complete the season, the series, I should say, not the season, the series of uploads for this practice. Because I think it's really fun. I really recommend people try it. And I can see the value in it. It's initially part of the Memories and Reveries practice, uh, which Marshall Vandruff talks about on The Draftsman. And I believe it's part of uh, Chemo Nicolaides drawing exercises, which was refined by Marshall Vandruff. And then this was, again, slightly altered for myself by making it on this specific piece of cardboard for the reasons that I've stated that 
it's a, a good size for the brush pen and all of them are done with brush pens for my series and it's also it looks nice uh, similar to film reel together which is just my preference because when there are so many drawings of a similar um, theme then I like them to all be fairly uniform in other ways as well I think it just adds to the appeal of the final product now this one was a memory that I had of getting some relatively large MDF boards that I have in the greenhouse at the back of my house and uh, I was using that dishcloth to wipe them down because they were getting a bit dusty and you know cobwebs and things on there so I'd take them outside of the greenhouse and wipe them down so that they were clean enough to bring in the house and emulsion and and start to paint on and that was my memory and out the back or the side of my house where the greenhouse is there is uh, garden furniture which is what you can see me drawing now and because I'm doing this from memory and there's no reference I'm just trying to think about what the design looks like and it is striking when you think about how little you remember certain things like not being able to remember what your front door looks like or something like that it's funny it makes you realize how observant or not you are and I'm not especially observant but I think it's a very good exercise for your memory and for your drawing practice but you have to really want to do it because I suppose it could be laborious if you don't really want to do something like this I find things like this quite fun um, these are grayscale brush pens that my brother got for me for Christmas a few years ago and I've always really enjoyed them they are uh, they're nicer than black for some reason and I love black ink but the grey ink to me it's just more appealing, it just has a quality to it, which black is, I think it's just a bit too extreme. Now, aside from there being a greenhouse, which you won't see in this image because of how I've cropped my uh, position and what I'm actually looking at. Aside from that, you have this row of plants and there are some plant pots out there. And I just try to remember what I saw. And it's something where I think I should spend the time to sit and draw what's really out there. Because what I remember is it's close enough where I think it's, you know, I've not done too bad to honour the truth of what's out the side of the house. But if I actually went out and spent the time to draw it, I'd have a deeper appreciation and I'd no actual plants as opposed to ideas of plants. These aren't plants of mine, so I'm not thinking I've put my plant, you know, this sort of plant there and this one there. Instead, I'm just thinking I'm pretty sure there's a plant pot around this size and they vary in the length of the stems and the leaves and the petals and things. So that's all I'm working off of. And then otherwise it's all environments, which is, you know, um, fake grass or um, soil or the garden wall, things like that. Whether or not there are paving stones. Um, that's how I build the memory, really, and try to create the environment as true to reality as possible and to try and maintain a point of interest so that when you look back at it, it isn't just a hodgepodge of marks. Instead, it's an actual patchwork of different surfaces and textures and renderings and hopefully will project you into a certain area and I do quite like this one none of them are especially good high level drawings I'm not saying that these are great drawings it's not anything where you could use it for anything it's it's more practice you know it's it's simply for improvement and for the love of drawing and just for the curiosity and memory I think all of those are quite interesting things, but it depends on what you're into. So 
it's good practice for perspective. You know, you can see that I'm trying to get contoured shapes. Here are some of the paving stones that I'm trying to get the perspective on the paving stones. And then the texture of the fake grass, which we have out there. And then some of the plants which are popping out behind the fake grass on this strip of soil where things have been planted. And it all creates a level of depth as well, which I always quite like. I think that's why I like this image as well, is because you have the MDF board at the front, the chair just behind it, the paving stones behind that, the plant pot on top of that, the plants in the row on the, um, the line against the garden wall there, and obviously the garden wall at the back. It's all just levels of depth in the image. I think I always appreciate being able to look deeper into a, an environment or, or a landscape of any kind. It's one which, you know, I, I'm at this point, I say it's the seventh video which I uploaded. But in honesty, I think it's out of the ones that I actually drew, it will be... Oh, actually, it's, it turns out coincidentally it's the seventh one that I'd drawn. I'm looking on my wall at the moment where they sit and it is the seventh drawing. For the other videos, that's not the case. The order of the videos that I uploaded wasn't the order of them which I drew. I didn't record all of them. Um, in total, I drew 13, which is just under two weeks, as you obviously know. And I think if I would have done two months worth of these drawings, I would have maintained the practice longer and longer. But because it wasn't being appreciated at university, it wasn't something which was helping my course that I was doing. It just seemed to be an additional job to do for myself and for my own artistic growth. Whereas university just wanted me to splash and splatter paint and to remove my own hand from the image and things like that. Things which frustrated me more when I really wanted to improve, they wanted you to stop trying stop putting in effort, stop using talent. And they'd say things like that. They'd actually use those words. And uh, it became less and less a place where I wanted to express myself because I was really trying to improve because I felt so inadequate at several practices. And their version of practice is to use a stencil and not even a stencil like a, a Banksy stencil where you could you know, draw an image and cut it out. It was more just get something that's shaped like a tree and paint over that so that you've got the outline of a tree shape. And I just can't do things like that. You know, I, I know I could, but I can't. It would be torture. So instead I fought it. I suffered in marks and I'm just going to have to accept you know, not passing as a as an A student because I, I simply won't conform to that type of uh, practice. Not out of any kind of pride, but it just seems the principle of what I appreciate in art is being dishonoured in their um, in their methods. So that's me. But that's when I was doing this. It was a uh, second year of a uh, fine art course. And... This drawing was, um, well, I'd already gotten into the swing of the 15 minute memory by this point. So I was quite comfortable just taking my time. I knew that 15 minutes is a good amount of time to do a drawing. And when I took longer, I usually made it worse. So not having as long was almost a blessing so that I could um, avoid making those same mistakes. This was tricky, this part which I'm doing now. I've done this on a couple of the drawings, which is the garden wall. And it turned out being a difficult texture to render. And it's something which I should really think about better because there will be a way of doing it. And the way that I'm doing it is to try and avoid shading, but to try and add texture, try and suggest what I'm seeing, but without, without either doing actual shadow or doing hatching. 
So instead it turned out being Squiggles. Squiggles, I mean, not Squiggles. Squiggles. Um, and to me, it does remind me of the surface and the area which I've drawn, but I do think there'll be a better way of doing it. And I haven't revisited these types of drawings or these uh, locations since. Now that does look like hatching. It's literally just dash marks, but it's supposed to be a suggestion of a divide between the panels. I know what I'm doing. I kind of take that as not a cheat or a breaking of the rules, especially not compared to how I have um, subconsciously in other you know versions of this practice. I don't think there's anyone else that I know who's done this as, a, as an exercise. But really, if you're watching this and you're curious, I really do think that if you like drawing, give it a try. If you have the time, I mean, it's 15 minutes, so it's not the worst thing in the world. And see how much you can remember without looking at something. I really couldn't remember that much. And then bits of dashes for the fake grass, which I don't think is the worst thing. It uh, helps you try to accept your mark making, even if it's not the strongest, and mine certainly isn't. But it's uh, it's a charming thing to finish because it's squiggly, it's loose, but if you commit to it, then you will end up with images of different landscapes. And I really like that. Now, to be honest, memories don't necessarily require it to be landscapes. But for me, because I was in isolation, that's why all of mine were landscapes. And there was only two images which had people in it. Unless you count the one where I was drawing a cartoon character. Because um, I was watching cartoons a lot and that was one of my memories. But I, my first drawing was a drawing of me and my image in the mirror. So it was two of me in the one drawing. I mean, it was a really bad perspective and drawn wrong. It was the only one which I didn't draw in grey ink. I drew it in a sanguine ink, which is nice, but I didn't want to waste the sanguine ink on this series. But yeah, that's uh, that was the first one. And then the second drawing was a memory of going to a petrol station so it was the uh, attendant who I drew there and the rest of them like this were landscapes so that's how it ended up and I really quite like it I think that you know a series of those drawings are quite nice I think they've got a quality to them and uh, they're a testament to a practice during lockdown which if I hadn't have done it I wouldn't have benefited from the knowledge that I gained and from the product that you're left with afterwards. So, yeah, I really do recommend considering doing this 15-minute memory practice. Or try the memories and reveries. Memories being this practice of 15 minutes to do something from memory and reveries is 15 minutes to draw something which is not from a memory and it's not figurative. It's just patterns and swirls and play to see what you come up with for composition and just for mark making. And I haven't done as many of those. But that is the final drawing from the 15 minute memory series. And that went up on the wall with the others and it wasn't the last one in the series. I do think that I, uh, yeah, I did. I, I think that the drawings after this were featured earlier in the series. But I believe I may be pinning it up on the wall in this video right now. And then showing you where it is in the series. So here we are. That's where it went. Okay. So that shows that I'm about halfway through. 
But that's the last of this series, unless I continue it in the future, which I may do. But at the moment, I don't know. I've got other things that I'm trying to get done. And you can see there on the left my landscape drawings that I like to do in ink, in fine liner. So there they are. 15 minute memories with a grey brush pen on a piece of cardboard. And they're not too bad. As I said, that one is one of my favourites. Okay, so that's the drawing, that's the finished piece. And I do quite like how this turned out, even though it's a bit strange for someone who doesn't know what I'm drawing. It's quite different to the others from the series. If you haven't seen the other videos, then please give them a look. And if you do like this video, then please leave a like and, and a comment in the uh, comment section below and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.